in this nitty gritty basics let's play live stream we're going to be playing american mahjong at mahjong time if you haven't tried playing at mahjong time yet look for my email in the video description below i can send you information about their vip trial there's all kinds of other information in there including a link to a handout for today's topic which is three ways to simplify decision making overall during the charleston primarily but the techniques can be used in the pick and discard phase of the game too that link will be in the video description after the session i want to give a quick shout out before we get started with the nitty-gritty details to Ooh. the moderators thank you so much for helping moderate chat so I can focus on this presentation and then we can get to some gameplay with commentary. Welcome. I want to also give a shout out and a big hug, virtual hug, to Sally Dom, Gail Cruz, and Joan Cantor who joined as members. I really do appreciate your support. All the members of this channel have been donating to help support this YouTube channel. There's a lot that goes into it. And so that monetary support really does help, especially since I quit my day job. And this is now my full-time job. So this gives me the opportunity to get a little bit of compensation while I serve the community in this amazing way. I hope you enjoy the presentation today. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Oops, I'm not doing a video. We're doing a presentation, super quick presentation, actually. Well, relatively quick, I should say. Uh, let me get it into the slideshow format really quick here. Okay, better, much better. All right. Can everybody hear me and see me okay? Let me double check YouTube and make sure. Okay, wow, there seems to be quite a delay. Let's just double check. Make sure that we have, usually there's like a five second delay. So let me just double check YouTube. Yeah, we're, we're caught up. Okay, good morning, good morning. All is well. Therefore, here we go. Three ways to simplify decision making during the Charleston. I'm going to add that to this title because we are focusing on the Charleston. It's half the game. So this is where you really set up, set yourself up for success. The first thing that I want to share is the purpose of the Charleston. This is kind of the pre-game, if you will, because technically the game doesn't start until East discards. So the Charleston is a way for players to quickly improve their dealt hand, potentially, because it's gonna require good decision-making while exchanging up to 21 tiles in seven passes. And if this is done right, you can expedite hand development. The goal is to improve the dealt hand so that when you get to the pick and discard phase of the game, the hand development is already underway. Hopefully you will have been able to gather tiles and fill in gaps so that once you get to that pick and discard phase, you can start building the hand. So the Charleston is more for gathering and filling in gaps, whether you're playing at the category level or at the hand level. And we'll talk about that as we go. Karen, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate the support so much. Thank you. All right. So one thing I want to mention here, and I'm not sure if I might have added a section to this. And if I didn't, I need to. I know I added a section to another Charleston, um, maybe the hand development presentation, which is a little more advanced than this one. But I have seen many 
posts in social media, and I have received direct emails from people who have shared that some groups are omitting the second Charleston as a house rule. They just do the first Charleston and then the optional cross and sometimes even a mush, which is a whole new another topic, really. If you don't know about a mush, look, just do a search in the wiki on my, on Marsh Life because it's another house rule. Anyway, they're omitting the second Charleston because, well, the primary logic is that the second Charleston is redundant and that you get the same tile. So why do it? And while you do see some of the same tiles going around in some games, it doesn't, it, it's not across the board because sometimes players change their hand in the middle of the Charleston. If I'm not getting my tiles in the first Charleston, I watch for that trend and I could switch my hand completely, a diff totally different category. Maybe I'll start hoarding wins because I now have a lot of wins or dragons or what have you. So I could change my hand in the middle of the Charleston, which means I'm going to free up fresh tiles. So fresh tiles will go around in the second Charleston if people change their hand. And it happens all the time. So it behooves everyone to do the second Charleston, even if it feels like Groundhog Day. It's temporary. And you could get another tile. And one tile can fill a gap or strengthen one of your blocks that you're developing. So it behooves every player to do the complete Charleston. It's there for a reason. It's optional after this first left. If someone has had really great development to that point and they only have two or even one tile to pass, that's why it's optional. Because if they do so well during the Charleston and they get the right tiles at the right time, or really they make the right decision at the right time, then they can stop the Charleston. But that does not apply or should not apply. I mean, there's no rule, it's a strategy, but it should not apply when you have three tiles to pass, even three or four, three or more. Because if you have three tiles to pass, do the second left. If you get all the tiles you want in the optional or in the cross pass where you have to pass obligatory, you're obligated to do that cross pass, you can let one tile go or even two if you can pung or kong those blocks on discard if they're not kept or you can use a joker later so even if you get everything you want in the second left you can sacrifice some tiles that can either be called or filled in with jokers to do that cross pass and then you can pass blind on the last right and then you can pass none in the optional cross so it's just that second left that is the only risk when you have three discards and the chances of you getting all keepers is pretty slim although it has happened to me and that's when you sacrifice one of the tiles that can be used in a pung or a kong because then if that player doesn't keep those tiles they'll pass them or then they'll be discarded in the early game and you can call them, hopefully. That's that's the hope. Or you can just use jokers, like I said earlier. So if there's not a section in here on this topic, I'm going to add it. I'm going to watch this repost, so I will add it because this is really important. Uh, let's see. Has anybody ever played in a game where they don't do the second Charleston? Write that in chat and let me know. Put a Put a one in chat if you've played in a game where they don't do the second Charleston. All right. We're going to move on now. There are four stages in hand development. The first stage is target. And we're going to dig into each one of these. So at a high level, you're going to target the strength of the hand. 
then you're going to gather based on the strength of the hand. Then you're going to build. Typically, that happens when you filled in gaps. And a gap, for example, might be you're playing three, six, nine, and you have no threes. That would be a gap. <laughs> you really don't want to do that, but that's just a quick example. And along the way, you're going to defend. So really, defense happens throughout. Like you want to pass defensively, but defense is most important in the third and fourth wall. So those would be the later stages of the game where defense takes a higher priority. So the stages are target, gather, build, defend. And while you're looking at your tiles, if you just think about these stages, it can kind of help you compartmentalize the game so that you're not, you're not feeling overwhelmed or pressured. Just think, okay, I'm targeting. I'm targeting the strength of my hand. And we'll talk about what the strength of the hand is in a few minutes. So you're in target mode. You're in the target stage. Once you've targeted the strength of the hand, you're going to gather tiles that can be used to support the strength of the hand. And you're going to play a category that uses most of your tiles. So that's the gather stage. And during that gather stage is when you're also filling any gaps, if you have any. Then you're going to start building up because in American Mahjong, it's a game of multiples, which I think we're going to talk about. And I'm going to prove why this is true. 91% of the hands use multiples, Kongs, and quids. And then, of course, you're going to defend. So while you're in these stages, you're going to analyze the situation when you get to a decision point. You're going to identify any alternatives. You're going to consider the choices based on the information that you have at the time. Like during the Charleston, you might see trends. That would be some information that you can use to identify alternatives and consider choices. And then you're going to make a decision. So th this is what this is sort of the decision making path during every game of the Charleston. First, you have the stages where you target, gather, build, defend. And along the way, with these decision points, you're going to analyze the situation at the time with the information that you can you have at, at hand, which would be trends in the Charleston or discards and exposures during the game. Identify your alternatives. Consider the choices that you may have because American Mahjong is very flexible. And then you're going to make a decision and move on. Try not to do the coulda, shoulda, woulda. During this decision making and during these stages of the game, sometimes your plans can be thwarted. For example, let's say during the Charleston, you were thinking maybe you'll play wins and surely you'll, you'll get wins during the Charleston, but you don't get any. Well, that's a trend. Someone else is playing wins, likely. So that's where I would maybe change my hand. If I only have a few wins and I thought, hmm, maybe I'll get some, I'll probably change and go with number tiles. And that will free up those wins. And there's a whole strategy about that, too, because, of course, if someone else is playing wins, you're then going to release them and they could keep them to better their hand. So there's some considerations there. <clears throat> so during the pick and discard phase of the game if your tiles are getting discarded quickly like let's say let's say you're playing wins and they go down in the first couple of rounds of discards if people aren't playing wins they'll just discard those and joke uh, dragons typically will go down like that too so when that happens and also when your tiles are exposed like let's say you need a pair of threes and someone puts up a pung in the suit that you we're hoping to get. Well, you might have to retarget and then gather again and then rebuild. Sometimes you have to restart the stages, but it's always the same target, gather, build, defend. And then you have this decision path. Any questions on this part of the presentation about the stages of hand development? And incidentally, this is the topic of my new book that I'm working on right now. 
the art of hand development. I'm writing another book and all these presentations and theories and uh, concepts are going to be in a, a book. It'll probably be a small book, I'm thinking, maybe 25 pages, but it'll be a, a book. It'll be a, a paperback or an ebook. So my hope is to release that in January, uh, you know, 2024. So all, all this information that in all these nitty gritty let's play live streams that I do will be in a book just in case we have voracious readers and people who like to get their hands on a book. All right. Anyhow, we're going to keep going. When you target the strength of the hand, here's what you're going to look for. The first technique is to optimize. And when you get your dealt hand, the first thing that you should look for are multiples. Pair Pong Kong. Multiples. Multiples should drive the decision making in every hand. And there are some nuances to the theory of working with multiples. And we'll go into that as we go. So if you first look for multiples and start your decision making there, that is the best technique for American Mahjong. And I'm going to show you why I believe there's a, a chart in here with statistics. But here's an example, uh, oops, of a hand, three, five, one. We have multiples, three, five, and one. We could play little odds here. That would target every multiple. And like I say, American Mahjong is a game of multiples. 91% of the hands use pairs, punks, and kongs. You might as well target them. If you have multiples, that is going to be the strength of the hand. You're going to gather tiles to support the multiple and pick a category that will use most of your tiles. And that's what maximizing is. So here's an example of a 369 hand. Maximizing would be choosing a category that uses most of your tiles. And in this case, we have no multiples. So this technique is really great when you look at your tiles and you have no multiples. That happens. It happens often. When it does, you maximize. You pick a category that uses most of your tiles. So you look for the predominant pattern and hopefully no gaps. Here's why this, this works. So with my an, uh, annual card analysis, if you missed that, I'll try to remember to put a link in the video description after the session where I go into the nitty gritty details of the comparison from last year's card to this year's card. And 84% of the hands of the card use big multiples. That would be Pung and Kong and Quint. Uh, and then, sorry, the pairs is 61%. Together, that's 91% of the hands on the card. So when you're looking at your dealt hand, we're looking at optimizing. We have one, three, and five. Most of the hands use pairs, pungs, and kongs, so build around them. That would be the strength of the hand. If you don't have multiples, build around the predominant pattern. So here we, we have a pair of sixes that developed. So we could maybe instead of playing three, six, nine, we can hold consecutive tiles around the, the six. You could also still play three, six, nine, but you still have to be able to pass. You have to be able to pass tiles. So really a three, six, nine hand would probably use most of your tiles. You've got to think about what you're passing though, because here we have two, four, five with the tiles we wouldn't use. That would be a pretty risky pass. I probably would maybe release the three BAM since it's isolated from the nine BAM. And instead of maybe passing the four dot, swap that out with the three BAM. So there's some defense that you need to think about with your passes. Because whatever you pass could potentially build your opponent's hand. You don't want to do that. You want to mitigate the risk. Every pass is going to have risk. But you just want to try to mitigate it 
and make it as safe as possible and still focus on your hand as the top priority. Your hand comes first, then you pass as defensively as you can with your remaining tiles. So when you start with no multiples like this one, oh wait, that is a multiple right there, three, six, nine. Let me see right here. So here, let's see here. I thought we had one with no multiples. Where'd that go? Right here. So here's two, three, four, five, six, nine in dots, one, three, nine, and bams, three, six in cracks, no multiples. Well, in this example here, a multiple developed, we've got a six dot. So you just always want to reassess because you could play consecutive run, but you could also play three, six, nine, and that would use more tiles. That would be maximizing. So the last technique is streamlining. This is when you would consider consecutive run as your chosen category. And the reason for that is because it's the most flexible category on the card. And it has the most options. Even if you look at odds, it looks like there are more options and it's close. But consecutive run is the next in order, as you can see here. We have odds as 20%, 14 hands. Uh, there are, sorry, there are more in other categories with consecutive run. That applies as well. There are 15 other hands. Was it 15? Other hands that use consecutive, time, consecutive runs throughout the card. So even though there's only 11 hands in consecutive run, there are consecutive tiles all over the card. And that applies to other categories as well that we're not going to go into now. I do go into that in the um, new card analysis. So the idea with consecutive run is that it is the most flexible because there are three numbered suits, dots, bams, cracks. They are numbered one through nine. So you can go up or down the range, which gives you that great flexibility. Not only that, but the options of hands to choose from, not only in the category, but even outside the category. So consecutive run is a powerhouse category. It's the strong, or it is the, the most flexible category on the card, which gives it that powerhouse status. So consider that if you have no multiples, you're going to well, let's start with the multiples. If you have a multiple, you're going to target the multiple and let that drive your decision. If you don't have multiples, you're gonna maximize and choose a category that uses most of your tiles. That would be the strength of your hand, that predominant pattern. When a multiple forms, you reassess and target the multiple. Then you gather and play a category that uses most of your tiles. Sometimes you're gonna be in between. Maybe you're playing, let's say odds and maybe consecutive run. If you're in between and you have equal potential, maybe the same number of multiples or different multiples, or maybe you have more tiles for consecutive run with one of two multiples. If you're in between and you think the potential is equal, go with consecutive run because it is more flexible and it has more options. So we're going to talk about how to power up that would be stacking these techniques. You can optimize by targeting the multiple and then gather most of your tiles and play a category the, that uses the multiple with most of your tiles to support it. That would be maximizing. So you've optimized and maximized. And then if you're in between, consider streamlining and you're using all three techniques, targeting the multiple, leveraging the predominant pattern, supporting the multiple, and streamlining by playing consecutive run. And I just want to give a quick disclaimer. I don't play consecutive run every hand. It's only if you can leverage the strength of that category if you're in between different categories or even different hands. So it doesn't always apply. You're not going to play consecutive run every hand. I would recommend against that. You want to play throughout the card. However, if you can stack all three, you are going to gain an advantage at the table. If you have 
more than four discards after the Charleston, you're going to have work to do and you will be an underdog for that particular game. If you have four discards, you could be a contender for that game. And if you have less than four, you would be a front runner for that game. Less than four discards, you could potentially even win in the begin game or middle game. Sometimes, I mean, it, it's not a done deal, but chances are you're going to win if you have less than four discards after the Charleston using these techniques. Don't forget to look at my wiki on Mosh Life. I've got lots of, um, oh, I just print, I just posted a, a snippet with updates. So make sure you go to snippets so you see all the updates, including the wiki and merch. I have new merch out there too. So uh, don't forget also to go to my Facebook page if you're not sub uh, following me there. If you don't use social media, it's okay. Visit my website often. Go to snippets to stay in, in the know. And also check the event calendar to see what's going on. And then, of course, follow me on YouTube. And let's get to some Mahjong now. Does anybody have any questions about the presentation? The concepts, target, gather, build, defend, the decision-making path, and then the three techniques, optimize, maximize, streamline. You're not going to be able to use all three of them in every at every stage of the game. You might be using one or two, but when you can stack those techniques, you're going to, you're going to have an advantage at the table. So let's see if we can prove the theories. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll play Mahjong. Can someone write something in chat? I just want to make sure that everything is good. It seems like okay. I don't know what's going on with the um Okay, here's a table. We're going to join. And let's see if we can get in on it. Yep, we're going to go full screen. First game. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions about the stages of hand development? Okay, we're going to look for multiples. And we do have them. We have a one crack and a five dot. So that's where we start. One five. We're going to probably play little odds. That's a great way to use ones and fives. So we're going to hold every one and five. You hold every tile that you can use in the category. So we have little odds. That is the strength of the hand. Now it's using half of our tiles, really less than half. So we're not maximizing at the moment. With one crack and five dot, we're probably not going to be able to use the nines. We might be able to use the nines and then play a one suit hand and sacrifice the one crack pair. We have tiles we can pass. So at this point now, keeping the nine dots, we are maximizing for odds. Not necessarily little odds, but odds in general. We have no flowers, so I wouldn't keep the seven bam. I would not pass like numbers. That's almost as risky as passing a pair, in my opinion. All right, we have two eight. Those are evens. We're not even interested, so we can just move it along. So sometimes people might think, oh, I got a two dot. I should keep that because it matches my suit. American Mahjong is not a game of suits. Yes, there are hands that are in one suit, but it's very low. It's a very low percent. It's like 28% or something like that. More of the hands, 40 something percent of the hands. Maybe it's even more. I'll have to, I'm, I'm, my mind is not in the analysis piece, but way there are way more hands that are in mixed suits than one suit. So try not to be distracted by one suit. That's the bottom line. I'm going to quickly open my card analysis here. Let's see here. The art of hand development, this one might work. Okay, we did get a five. So that, that would work for little odds. So now we have to make a choice of passing south seven, eight. And I think we could maybe make it better by letting this one bam go. We really don't need that one bam. 
we have a pair one crack. So I would let, let that go and make it a little better, mitigate that risk just a little bit. All right, so I wanted to get, uh, let's see here. Okay, so mixed suit, 69%. One suit, 27%. That's a big difference. 27% of the hands use one suit. So try not to be distracted by one suit. Here's another one. It looks pretty, but that's not helpful. Oh, look, we got a one, a one crack. So one, three, five is looking pretty good here. Maybe we could play one through the concealed hand. I wouldn't pick a hand though. We have discards. Anytime you have discards, you really don't have to pick a hand. You're still in gather mode. We're gathering. What would be ideal here is a three crack and a seven dot. Oh my gosh, we got like numbers. I would not pass those on, especially a two. So what I would do here is focus on probably, this is when you would look at the hand level. So we're playing at the category level up to this point. We're just gathering odds. But now we have a really risky pass, like numbers with twos. And it's 2022. I would not do this. I would not pass twos like that. So I would look at my options and whittle something out to mitigate the risk. So we're going to pass the three and let that go because we can play that concealed hand. We do have gaps, but they're singles. So I'm hoping we'll fill those gaps. We're still in gather mode. All right. So now we've got a three band and I would keep that. We could maybe play, for example, the third hand down and mix suits, little odds if we get a flower. And that gives us tiles we can pass. So anytime you have tiles to pass, stop the analysis. Just don't even spend time there because you're going to now get new tiles that's going to basically wipe the slate nearly clean. Okay, so now we have a green dragon. Green dragon could be useful with the middle hand, fifth hand down on the left, but we've got a gap. We let a three dot go and we have no three crack. That's two gaps, so I wouldn't even think about that. We do have a one BAM, so we have one, three, five odds. Our opponent wants two, so we can do two right here. We're going to keep all the odds. So we're at the category level. We may be able to do the concealed hand, but we don't have to pick a hand. We don't know yet how many discards we have to work with. So let's just see. Okay, we have another multiple a one bam. So in the end, we have one discard and a category. Oh, we have all keepers with one discard. We just picked a tile here. So we're focused on odds. We have discards, so we don't have to pick a hand category. right now. So I'm, we would just gather. Easy I wouldn't win. pick a hand here. I would continue to gather. And this is where you use that decision-making path. We're going to watch the situation, watch the trend. Okay, now that tile we could potentially take, but we don't know what hand we're playing, so I would let it go. Typically, don't pick a hand until you run out of discards and then pick a hand. We So now this two band, two band is gone. So we have all keepers. We have no discards. Now we drill into the hand level. This is when oh, you go deeper. Dude. So here... I would probably, let's see, we are playing a gap hand if we play the concealed hand. If we play a little odd one, three, five, three bam we really can't use a one crack with a one bam this year. And the three bams are going down, I would pass. So I would let this go. I would let the three bam go at this point, which means three that we're not going to be able to use the one bam. So we'll just let that go and we'll focus on seven characters. the concealed hand. Right now, we're playing a gap hand. That's Six where characters. you have a gap with one of the blocks. We have no three crack seven and we have characters. no seven dot. My hope is that we're going to draw it. Um, another thing that might happen is if we get a seven crack, we might be able to play the fifth hand on the right with that green dragon. So let's keep, let's keep this green dragon moves. for a minute. And also, if you remember, we passed a hmm. green dragon and somebody kept it. So let's just hold it and see what happens. Six characters. We got the three cracks. So now we filled a gap. 
at this point, I would let this dragon go. Green dragon. And now that we only have one gap, a single tile, we can run with this Two hand. Bamboos. We only have one gap, and it's Green a single, dragon. a seven dot. We've got a joker. We need pungs East of one wind. five in cracks and five nine. Okay, now a flower here. I don't think it's going to help us. And I want to hold on to this pair for a while. We might be able to get wow. a joker out of that. What do you guys think about the development of this hand? Would you have played the concealed hand? West wind. Or would you have played something different? Seven characters. It's a little risky. We need that seven dot. Nine characters. We do not need the red dragon, but there is a hand we could potentially play. We let a flower go at the time. We didn't we didn't have the red dragon. We maybe could have played the fourth hand down. Let's keep it and let the one bam go and see what happens. One bamboo. No interest. So we'll just let it go. Six bamboo. If we happen to get Red a flower, wind. we could consider the fourth hand down. Seven but I would characters. say no. I wouldn't do that because we need One three bamboo. pair and we have two singles and a gap. Two with the dots. concealed hand we have one gap of a single so that is a much stronger choice i would let that red dragon go and there's one out eight dots kong nine dots we need a seven dot okay that's a keeper red dragon all right so we need one more pick and we'll be ready to win on a seven dot the player to the left is playing two dots let's see seven bam pung with a kong pung. of eights seven bam pung red dragon so they're playing pung kong pung kong let's see wait a minute no eight what are they dots. playing seven eight seven eight seven eight pung kong seven eight, eight seven dot. eight Okay, the nine crack three. Let's let this three dot go. I believe three that dot. that went around in the Charleston. Kong. Okay, we got two jokers up for grabs. Flower. Now they're not going to be using a seven dot, and the player to our left is not going to be using a seven dot. Five we don't bamboo. know what the player to our right is doing yet. Let's let this four crack go. Four. Characters. They could be playing Pung Kong in mixed suits over there. They could Nine also be characters. playing the first hand. Oh, that's good. Nine crack. So now that's not a fresh tile anymore. East wind. So we're looking for a seven dot. We still need nine a five character. dot or nine dot to get ready to win. We're playing the concealed hand. Let's see. Three crack. One, three, five. The dragons are down. Red dragon. Yeah, let's let the three crack three go. Three characters. Okay, we need one good pick. Oh, maybe we'll get a joker exchange Eight here. Bamboo. The three dot or the two dot. That would be nice. And we still are, don't know where that that seven dot is. Oh, the player to oh. our left needs a seven dot. They need a Nine pung. Bamboo. They need a pung of seven dot. So at least one Eight of them bamboo. might be available. So we do have a competitor for the seven dot. They're playing seven, eight, seven, eight. Seven dot eight dot seven bam eight bam. One so dragon. we have a competitor for the seven. Nine bamboo. But at least if we can get ready, let's see. No one's playing wins. Nine characters. Yep. East. I yes, Ruth. I just caught that. Two dots. There's a delay. So <laughs> seven dot. Oh, there's the seven dot. Okay, and they didn't take it. So now, yeah, we Green may dragon. we may not be able to complete this hand because the seven dot just went down, but they didn't take Big it, bamboo. which my hope is that they're not ready. So we're going to stick with it. Five we're characters. kind of, we're pretty much committed to this hand at this point. We, we don't Four have bamboo. enough time, I think, to switch to something else. That's the challenge with odds is the, the ability to switch your hand is limited because of the span of numbers in between 
Okay, now we're ready to win on the seven dot. South wind. And we could get it. I'm hoping that they're not ready for it. Six dot. So let's see if we can get this hand. Six dot. We need a seven dot to win. My hope is that they Four weren't ready for wind. it. If they have a pung in their hand and that's why they didn't take it, then of course we West won't be able wind. to win. But we did get to Red a ready dragon. hand, which is very good. Three characters. And we'll pass. Three bamboos. One bamboo. I need a dot on this hand too. I, does anyone South does wind. anyone dot their card? When you win a hand, Flower. do you put a dot on your card? Nine characters. Okay, we need that keeper. East wind. At least we know the player to the right isn't keeping seven dots. White dragon. Nor the player across Seven from us. Bamboos. Oh, shoot. I thought that was it. North wind. Oh, four dot. Uh-oh. This is going to be a risky discard. Four dot. We're ready to win, though. I'm okay with it. Pung. Okay. They need... <laughs> Flower. So they need a pair of ones and a pair of fives. We have a pair of North fives. North wind. There is no five dot out right now. So Three if characters. we get a five dot or a one dot we might switch to defense because Four we have a competitor for the seven. Six dot. So we'll see what happens. I'm hoping not though. One dot. Uh-oh. Mahjong. There it is. They did have the seven dots. All right. Well, I'm still happy that we got to a, a ready hand. That's an accomplishment. Here we have one through five. There's a joker in there. So they got a 25 point hand over here. They are ready to win on an eight band. They did have the seven dots, which we needed. We did get ready, which is good. Over here, we have a two, four, six, eight hand and one suit, third hand down. They were ready to win too. Wow. Oh my goodness. Everybody was ready to win. Interesting and scary at the same time. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go. Here we go. We're going to jump over here. Next game. Thank you, Diane. We just need people to join the table. Oh, thank you, Ruth. I hope that it simplifies. If you just think about it, kind of compartmentalize the process. Target, gather, build, defend. And then you have that decision path. And I think I might break that out a little more. Or, or well, anyhow. So target, gather, build, defend. And then optimize, maximize, and streamline. Those are the primary takeaways, the stages of hand development to kind of watch where you are in the process to kind of identify your potential to win and then use as many of those three techniques as you can stack them if you can, because that's going to give you an advantage. That's the summary. We just need one more player to join the table. Thank you so much for coming to the live stream. This is the nitty gritty basics. So we're, we're just um, talking about basic strategies and hand development. Tonight is nitty gritty prime time where we do a more complex uh, strategies. I think tonight is strategy by wall, where that's another uh, strategy where you're compartmentalizing the game, which to me makes it less overwhelming if you can kind of compartmentalize the game. 
Okay, let's see what we have here. I wanted to check on the topic for tonight. Okay, we have a multiple, the two crack. Always just look at your dealt hand, target the multiple. So whatever we play, we're going to use a two crack. And we're going to look at the rest of our tiles and keep most of them maximized. We targeted the two crack. We're going to maximize now. So we might be able to use the one. We might be able to use the dragon. Since we're keeping the dragon, we might as well keep both. Since we're keeping a one, two, we might as well keep the one. And now we're using most of our tiles. So we've targeted the multiple and we're maximizing probably consecutive run. So let's pass south, nine, and then maybe, let's see here, either the five or the six. I kind of, I don't think I want to, I don't think I want to pass. I think a six, nine is better than passing six, seven if we get keepers. So let's just see. All right, we have a four and an eight. So the trend here at the moment is evens. We have three discards, so let's let these go. So we have four, eight, and a two. So we're kind of in between evens and consecutive run. Evens and consecutive run. So let's just see how this goes. If we get threes, we can go back to consecutive run with two, three, four. Right now, our run is one, two. We have a five and a six. So two, four, six, eight. Here's a five. So we have one, two, four, five, two, four, six, eight. We have one discard. So we need to go to hand level, or really, we're in between categories right now. We have two, four, six, eight, or consecutive run. Since we have a gap from the two up to the four, five, I would rather play with evens and even let this one man go at this point. So I'm thinking evens is the better choice because it uses most of our tiles. We just got a one crack though. That is another multiple. So now we would reassess. Anytime you develop a new multiple, you go back to retargeting. So we're going to target and then we're going to gather one, two, up to eight, not going to work. One, two, up to six, not going to work. We definitely want to keep going. We've got four discards. So here we can pass six, eight, and we're focused on consecutive run, one, two, hopefully one, two, three, four. We have a gap, no three. So most likely this four ban will go if we don't pick up a three. So we're, we're, we have a bit of a gap. Our four BAM is isolated. Anytime you have an isolated tile, if you're playing consecutive run, that could be a discard. So let's just wait and see. Right now we'll keep it. We do have a joker. We could, for example, use the joker for a three BAM and play the second hand down on the right. That would be a gap hand. You want to try to minimize that, though, as an option. We do have another four. So that is a multiple, and I would keep it. And we do have tiles we can pass. Now this five crack, if it were a five dot, it would be better. We could play that third hand down or that fourth hand down. Um, single pair Pung, Kong Kong, but that's not going to help us right now. Probably with two suits, with the one, two, and four, this dragon is not going to be helpful either. So I would probably, instead of passing seven, eight, pass the green dragon. Yep, that's true. We could play that third hand down. And I am thinking about it. Uh, let's see, one, two, three. We have... We, we have a hand now with no gaps. We have two hands with no gaps. The third hand down, and we could play the fifth hand down in mixed suits. So we do have options right now, but we're definitely in consecutive run. So at the moment, one, two, three, four, mixed suit, Kongs, fifth hand down on the right, or the third hand down, one, two, dragon. Okay, so now we have a five BAM. That's not really helpful because we have two, three, four. And with our one, two, we won't be able to get up to a five. So I would pass fully and let those go. It's a little bit risky, but at least there's two suits. So you mitigate the risk. There's going to be risk in every pass. You just want to make it as, as benign as possible while still focusing on your own hand. 
So we have two potential hands here, or really three potential hands, because we could still maybe play that. Oh, look what we got, a one crack, one crack. So win. I wouldn't pick a hand. We have two discards. The only oh. time you have to make that choice is if one of your tiles is discarded. Thank God. So at the moment, we don't have to make any decisions, but we could Kong the one. We could even Kong the two. But we need Seven we need a pair of flowers in here. And then we also need more red dragons. Okay, the six dot is out, so let's let that go. Six dot. So we're looking at the second hand down on the right. It's a Thank gap. God. We need a three band. If we get a three band, Seven that's what I would move. play. If um, not, then we could consider Went the third win. hand down with the dragon or the fifth hand down on the right. So we have one of three hands. We have two discards before we have to make a choice. Oh, wait a minute. Look, we have three, four and dots, Six but we'd have character. to break up a pair. We could do one, two, three, four, no Bond gaps. Bamboo. Second hand down on the right. So maybe that, that is a keeper for a little bit. Five bamboos. Okay, let's see. Let's let the eight go. Eight bamboos. We have really only one discard Six before bamboos. we have to get to the hand level. We're still at the category level. We're gathering and we're hoping to Four fill dots. a gap. It would, okay, now we're not ready for that. That's going to be a Kong if we play that second hand down. So we're going to pass and now that will be a discard. Because we would need One a joker bamboo. for a Kong. We just got a, a multiple, though, with it. So at now what I would do is let the four bam go. Because we could use this joker to help us with that four dot if another Green one goes dragon. down. So now second hand down on the right. One, two, three, four. Pung Kong, Pung Kong. Flower. We need to build. So we've targeted. We've gathered. Now we build because we filled our gaps. We're going to pass. We would need to Kong if we play the third hand. There's a four crack. Look at all the fours. Four characters. Try not to be distracted, though. We're building around our multiples, which is one, two, crack, four dot. The four, four bam characters. is probably going to be discards. Two we'll characters. see, though, because if we do, okay, we need to Kong that regardless. So we're going to Kong. Kong. And now we have to make a choice. I think what I would do is let the flower go and the dragon flower. because we need a pair of flowers and that is a weakness. Now we have another discard with the red dragon. So we have time before we have to make a choice with the four man. One if we bamboo. draw a three band, that will be better than flower. the four dot because we would need a joker for the four dot. So we're, we're looking at, the potential of getting a three band. That's what we're hoping for. Seven bamboo. So we have one, two, Pung Kong. We have three, four, Pung Kong potential with dots. Five and we have a gap, no three band, and then the four band, which has not been discarded Seven yet. Wind. So we're giving ourselves options. Okay, now we're going to let this north go now. The player North across wind. from us might Kong that. Hopefully they're not ready to win. Kong. All right. We've got, whoa, three jokers. Okay. So with north and south, they're playing either Six dragons, bamboo. a year hand. So Two third and fourth hand down under wins, or they're playing the first hand. So we need to be very careful with, with dragons primarily and year tiles. We don't know yet which hand they're playing. I don't see One any. Bamboo. Let's see. I see a west out. So they could still maybe be flower. doing the first hand. They threw a flower. So my guess is they're either doing the first hand or the dragon hand. Eight dots. That's just my guess. But I could be wrong. Nine oh, dots. Oh, you know what? We need to escalate this red dragon as a discard because if they're playing dragons, we do not want to hold on to that. Eight we dots. need to swap this out because that could be one of their tiles. North and south Seven with dragons. Bamboo. Third hand down. We want to discard this right away, and they just got a keeper, it looks like. Seven so dots. this could be a winner here. We're going to let it go. And look Red what we got. Dragon. We got the four band. They're playing dragons, I bet. Okay, now we have a little more Seven strength. Dots. We have a little more strength because the Seven four band dots. isn't out yet. 
We got the three. So let's Four just characters. see what happens. Eight bamboos out. Eight bamboos. So we have one, two, three, four, two ways. Two dots. My guess is the the dots will go. Eight characters. Four dots. Now for sure. We'll take a joker exchange. North wind. And we'll discard the three. The four dot is three dots. a safe discard. Nobody wanted the four, so we'll just hold on to those. Three dots. So we could pung the three or Kong the four, but not both. So we need one more good pick. Green dragon. And we'll be we'll be ready to win. We have three jokers south. up for grabs right now. North, south. No, no, no. The south is gone. We need a north or two one crack dot. for joker exchange. And then, of course, we could draw. There's a hesitation Kong. there. Oh, we get another turn and a joker exchange. Nine characters. Opportunity there. Lots of shopping available here. Three characters. Retail therapy. Five characters. Four bamboos. That's a Kong, and I would take it. Kong. We'll let the four dot go. Four dots. Four bamboos. Oh, they got our joker. Five characters. So we're playing Pung Kong, Pung Kong. We need one good pick. Hopefully it'll be a joker exchange or a or a natural tile. I Nine suppose. bamboos. Or we could maybe draw a joker. That would be nice. Three bamboos. Oh, that's our tile. That's okay though. We can use Fifth jokers. Dot. That's one of the nice things about the Pung Kong hand. You can use any number of jokers if your tiles go down. Two dots. Uh-oh, your hand. Eight bamboos. Okay, so there are two, three, two twos. Okay, so they're not playing dots with the year. They're not playing cracks with the year. Two are there dots. two bams out? <gasps> Flower. Uh-oh, this is going to be risky. Flower. Uh-oh. Kong. Okay, Kong is good. Another joker, another joker for exchange. Five bamboos. Oh boy, lots of jokers out. Two characters. Oh, they got one. Darn it. I think they're playing dragons. Green dragon. Oh, they just discarded one. So dots and dots and cracks. Pung. Oh, we got skipped. And another joker there. White dragon. Uh-oh. Oh, they didn't take it. Interesting. They're, they must be playing east and west then. Mahjong. Yep, east and west. Okay, so here we have a, a two, three, or oh, year hand. So this is the, uh, let's see, thir uh, third hand down with dragons. Two, three dragon. Nice. And here we have east and west. Over here we have odds. One, nine with pairs, three, five, seven in the middle. They needed nine dots. And of course, here we had one discard. Oh, we were nearly pure there. We just needed a three bam. Oh my goodness, we got close. Okay, we'll go again. Let's jump over here. Okay, so hopefully we'll get to play a few more games. Okay, this is a good one. We have no multiples. We do have a joker, a flower, four, five, eight, and bams, eight crack, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and dots, green and white dragon. So five, six, seven, eight, or four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, eight would use more tiles. That would be maximizing. So if we play five, six, seven, eight of some kind, probably this dragon can go let's see we do have all the eights but we need tiles to pass i would probably let's see here if we have all the eights i'd probably let the five go and then maybe the nine. Oh wait we have five through nine there i think because we do have all the eights we also have five through nine with the matching dragon 
let's see here. We could maybe play like numbers with eights, no gaps. Let's let one of the dots go here, four, five, nine. Let's see what happens. We can do like numbers with eights, or we could do consecutive run concealed. We just got an eight. So we can now maybe either, let's see, we have to make a choice. We could play like numbers with eights, or we can play five through eight with the white dragon. We have to make a choice. More of our tiles are in the run, so let's let the eight go. We'll let one of the eights go. We could always recover it or focus on the concealed hand or maybe the third hand down or even the fourth hand down in one suit. So the, the green dragon probably now can go that we've given up that eight. Can't keep it all. We did just pick up an eight bam though. Okay, so now this is where I would leverage the multiple and see if we can get that eight crack back. So I would give up on the five. I'm hoping the eight crack will come back because now we have two multiples with eights. Another thing that you could think about is the third hand down. We would need six, seven in cracks with pungs of eights. So I would keep that and probably, let's see here, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight. I'd let the six dot go and keep going. Okay, so we're looking at like numbers with eights or the second hand from the bottom. That is a gap right now, gap hand. We're playing a gap hand both ways because we need that eight crack back. No regrets, though. We did the best we could at the moment. So now we're in recovery mode at the moment, and that's okay. We got the eight back. I would play like numbers with eights and let maybe this seven, let's see, seven, eight, seven, eight, eight, let the six go, I think. Because there is a seven, eight, seven, eight, if we get an eight bam, I seven bam, I mean. Nine crack, eight, nine. There was an eight, nine coming. We do have some potential for the pair hand if we get that nine dot that was going around. We got the nine dot and the white dragon. Okay, so we have eight, nine dragon. We have one discard at the moment. I don't think I would play that pair hand because we have no nine bam and only two pair. We need six pair. I would let the nine dot go and pass two if possible. And probably I don't, I would not pass white dragon five, nine. I would not do that. Maybe we even keep that eight, nine and the dragon for that third hand down and use the eights elsewhere. I would say two and let this nine crack go. Keep the eights for like numbers. Keep the dragon for the third hand down. So we're in between like numbers and consecutive run. In between. And like numbers would use two of three multiples. The consecutive run would use two of three multiples. So this is where you would have that equal potential and going with consecutive run would be more flexible. However, we have no seven dot. If we had a seven dot, we'd probably be better off in consecutive run, but because we have an eight crack, all the eights are present. We, we could probably do okay. Look at what we got and a green dragon. Sounds good. <laughs> Oh, and there's a flower. Okay, let's let the three bam go. All right. Three bam so bam. now we have to make some choices here. We have light, we have dragons. So one bam I'm bam thinking bam. this nine will go and we focus on like numbers with eights. Three bamboo. That would leverage 
A one, two, three multiples. We're playing concealed. Do not be tempted to pung. Hi, Jingles. We do not need a West. Okay, West so win. double pungs. Hmm. Now, here's something. Let's see. We don't have the right tiles Three for. Dots. I was thinking about the double the double dragons. The second hand from the bottom under two four six eight. It uses two eight, hmm. but in this case we would need two cracks, and our multiples are Nine with the eights. Dots. Eight dot eight man. So I would let that go. I would let that idea go. There's a double uh, double dragon hand Eight in three six characters. nine, but our multiples are with eights. We're concealed. Another flower. Let's let the nine dot go. Nine so now dot. we could consider the first like number hand, and we're definitely in like numbers now. So nine what nine I would nine. probably do here, we're gonna pass. I would hold the dragons, but probably focus on the first hand nine characters and eight dot is out so that could be our Seven pair bamboos nine bamboos south wind seven characters okay we need to draw nine well here dots. Nine if we get the red dragon, I probably would play the concealed hand Seven and let dots. the flower go. Nine dots. Five characters. Oh, wow. The nines did come in for Nine us. Characters. Uh, we, we were thinking about playing the pair hand. Second one Two down, characters. eight, nine, eight, nine. But at the time, we had only one nine, and they just kind of trickled in. No regrets. Three characters. No regrets. Two bamboos. We have a pretty good potential for Five like bamboos. numbers. We could Kong one of the eights. Maybe the eight bam, if it goes down, we would have to make a choice at that point. Nobody wanted the white dragon, so I would discard that one Six first. characters. The eight dot will likely be our pair. North wind. But if we stay concealed, of course, eight we'll characters. be able to use that. Okay, now here, we're not ready for that. So we're going to let it go. Oh, Joker exchange. West Thank wind. you. All right, let's let this white dragon go. White dragon. Okay, so we're in between with like, like numbers with eights, one of the two hands. And it's going to be all about the red dragon i think five characters we have one discard before we have to make a Eight choice dots. that is our pair and if we're playing the dragon hand we're concealed so i'm going to let that go there's already an eight dot out. So that's the One pair. Bamboo. So if an eight bam or an eight crack go down that will be the decider. Six bamboo if we draw a red dragon, I would let the flower go and then that flower. green dragon because, and there are lots of flower opportunities. We're going to pass because we're still in between one of the two hands. If we do an exposure, we'll be locked in. So we still have flexibility. Three we have characters. one discard before we have to really pick a hand. And it's going to be based on what goes down. Two bamboo. So we're going to be watching the discards and the exposures to figure out what people are playing. If two we can. bamboos. Right now, only two white dragons are down. West Somebody wind. could be playing holding dragons. Seven so characters. we may have a competitor for the dragons. Six characters. Three characters. Red dragon. That is a discard. One character. Pung. Okay. Pung, Kong, one, three, Four three, characters. five, second hand down, mixed suits. Six characters. Okay, we got an eight bam. We gonna, we're going to let this dragon go now. Green dragon. 
because we need a joker for that eight dot seven bamboo. if we play the dragon hand i would play like numbers with eights using this Five pair because we're ready to kong now the eight bam and the eight dot and we can kong the flowers so i would at this point let the dragons go two dots <gasps> we got the red dragon though so now we'll let this flower go and flower. we're we're now ready to win ready to win on an eight crack no or eight dot eight no eight crack yeah eight crack and that's it mahjong. mahjong we got it we got it oh and i get a dot nice okay like numbers with eights ow oh my gosh <laughs> i just jabbed myself with my pen that hurt <laughs> okay like numbers with eights okay over here we have uh two three two three four five of uh three four five six four six three four five six i don't know i think they're trying for consecutive run here we have one two three four i thought maybe they were playing one three three five but they don't have three cracks so they're playing one two three four they have a five dot that they could use maybe to get a joker thank you for the kudos here's one two three with east and west pair pair kong so uh they were fighting each other with threes here okay here we go we'll be able to go again hopefully um let's jump over here see if we can bring them along with us thank you so much for the support that was a fun build we were in between consecutive run for a while and then we focused on like numbers we were in between staying concealed and going exposed that's that's kind of a a, th a thin a thin line to to walk there so that was a tight journey we have two multiples pung of flowers and a pair of sixes six bam so whatever we play we're going to use flowers and sixes so we could consider two four six eight consecutive run or three six nine we could maybe uh do something in mix suit with the five i would keep the sixes nines three six nine we have a gap no three i would probably keep this white dragon for a little while just to see what develops so we're kind of in between, I think, consecutive run or three, six, nine, maybe like numbers if we can get the six, the six crack. We're in between like numbers, consecutive run or three, six, nine. We have an eight. You might think, well, why not two, four, six, eight? We have no two or four. We just let the four go. So I wouldn't even think about keeping these and I wouldn't keep the eight because we we have no seven we could maybe do six seven eight nine but we have no seven I think eight would be a good discard for these other tiles that would be a, a really nice pass right there a little number in one suit a big number in the other suit and then a wind and then also we have an odd and an even that's like the best pass you can do Okay, so now we have a 369, no gaps. Here's 369, no gaps. We also have a 5-bam, 5-bam, 6-bam. One crack is our only discard at the moment. I think, let's see here, with a calm of flowers, there is a mixed suit 369 hand that we could do. I think I would focus on 369 and even let this white dragon go at this point three five six three six nine there's only one dragon or two dragon hands and i don't know if we're going to be able to use that maybe what we could do though 
is let the nine crack go with the five bam and keep the dragon. We'll see. We're still kind of in between. Three, six, nine. Okay, here's another nine. So three, six, nine seems to be the way to go. We're going to let the five crack go. One, five, seven. That's a little bit risky, but that's okay. There's risk in every pass. You just want to do the best you can with what you got. So we have three, six, nine. We're not going to pick a hand. We're in gather mode. Gather stage. We're in the gather, gather stage. Okay, now here's a little bit of consecutive run now. Six, seven, eight, nine. We have one discard. So we have to let something go. We could do six, seven, eight, mix suit Kongs, pear flowers. Let's see, six, seven, eight. I think I would let this eight go. I would let the consecutive go and focus on three, six, nine. Three, six, nine. We got a red dragon. Okay, so let's look at the double dragon hand. If we can get a three bam, we could play play that third uh, fourth hand down. That's a pair gap though. So we would need to think about an option. Let's see, three, six, nine, and one suit. I think we would we should. It's a that's a gap. I would let it go. I would let that go. Really, what we need is a green dragon, or maybe even not that. Okay, so we're going to stick with this here. Three, six, nine. They want two, so we can keep that seven for maybe consecutive. Although one, two, that's pretty risky. I think I would pass two and let the seven bam go and focus on three, six, nine. So we're playing a three, six, nine hand. It's going to be very challenging. We have one of the, or we have each of the tiles represented, but it's going to be a, a rough ride because we're in between mixed suits and one suit. We did end up with a pair of ones. Two characters. I wouldn't be too distracted one by that character. though. Let's see here. Another flower, four flowers. Okay. Seven. So characters. whatever we do, we're going to play a con. On the flowers. <laughs> Look at the flowers. Okay, so we One have bamboo. a pair of six bams. We could play the second hand six down. Bamboos. That's a pair for us if we play that either hand. Uh, let's see. We can let the north go. North. All right. Wind. Now let's see. What about if we keep an eye out for the addition Eight hand? Characters. No, no, no. We have a con of flowers. Three I bamboos. think what we ought to do is keep an eye out for six cracks and maybe play the three, the uh, like numbers with one Eight suit bamboos. or one number there, six dot. Okay, let's let the one dot go. One dot. So now we have sixes. <laughs> like numbers Eight with sixes, characters. we have a gap, no six crack. If we get a six crack, one I'd bamboo. switch to like numbers. We have sixes. One character. Oh, there's a white dragon. One. Okay, dot. let's just peel these off real quick. Three, six, nine dragon. The dragon hand Two is dot. off suit, so that's not helpful. That is not helpful. White dragon. I would. Okay, we're gonna pass. I think I would play th uh, like numbers with sixes. East wind even though we have a gap we can use jokers we're playing a gap hand One okay character. let's see three six nine kong of flowers seven characters green dragon wonder if we could get five six in cracks how that Two would be, bamboo. that's a double pair gap. That's rough. Okay, so here's a dragon. Let's just keep single dragons. Let's give up on the nine dot. Nine dot. We could play three, six, six, nine. Three, Kong. six dot, six, nine, bam. But we'd have to throw away a Kong of flowers. I would not do that. North wind. I think like numbers is going to be the hand again. 
unless we get five, uh, four, five in cracks, four, five, six, six. So let's keep an eye open nine for four, five in cracks. We could maybe try for that second five hand from bad. the bottom, but it is a long shot. It is a long shot Two because bamboos. we need pairs, pair, pair, four, five, pair, pair, six, West six wind. pounds. Two crack. White dragon. That's not helpful. Five bamboo. South wind. One dot. Eight ma'am. Let's let the three go. There is some. Three dots. There is some even potential building. Two characters. There's only one four flower hand though, and it's Six with one characters. suit. I think this two crack can go. I would not. I would not be distracted by these evens. I would Red leverage dragon. those dragons. Okay, our dragons, not dragons. The flowers okay two characters all right let's see here we're just gonna gather we're we're in gather stage seven dots. we have a gap we need to fill a gap six crack none are out right now which is nine good. bamboos we just got a pair now Eight bamboo. Maybe we'll get a joker out of that. Who knows? Nine characters. Three dot we just threw. So Three dots. we're playing a gap hand at the moment. North wind. If we can get a six crack, I'd go for the first hand. We do have a pair. Seven we bamboos. have one of these can be the pair. Four characters. So we're just waiting on a six crack to see what happens there. Now, our opponent, okay, there's one six crack out, but Five that's okay. Characters. Maybe that could be our pair if we can get at least one Two in bamboos. here. It would be a bit risky to North do that, wind. though. West can go. Nine dot exchange, thank you. Nine dots. Okay, let's let this go here. All right, Four so probably dots. what I would do here is define one of these as a six crack Three bamboos. to fill that gap. And I would probably let the dragons go. Four dots. And then we could maybe calm either the six bam Four or bamboos. six dot. Probably the six bam could be our pair. If the six bam is our pair, there's Four one out. Dots. We could Kong the six dot and Two the six characters. crack. This would be leveraging the flowers. Seven and we are now in the end game and throwing a flower right Seven now would bamboo. be very risky. Okay, let's see. One dots are down. There are one dot. there's a green dragon and white dragons are down. So they should be safe, although Red those are going to be risky to hold on to. One bam should be a safe discard. I think we should throw the dragons. There was Four a dots. there was a slight hesitation on Three that red dots. dragon. But we still have some potential for Three dots. the concealed hand. But we'd have to throw away flowers, and we don't know what our two of our opponents are doing. Dragon. There's a hesitation Joker. on that. Oh, no. 
Okay, now we have the red dragon. One bamboo. A white, red. We have one of each of the dragons. Okay, so now this is going to be risky. Are there any flowers out? No. Seven oh my gosh. Characters. Okay, so we're kind of developing the same hand. Four it is characters. going to be very risky to throw a flower right now because there are Six none characters. out. We would Kong that and we're not ready. So I would pass. And not only that, I would not throw flowers Seven at this stage. Characters. We're going to let the dragons go. Nobody has wanted them. Eight dots. We're going to keep the flowers just because they're so risky. Joker. Another Joker Seven down. Seven dots. So they're playing eight, nine. Eight, Monster. nine pair, pair. All right, this will be good to check this out now. So we have eight, uh, seven, eight, nine with wins, east and west. Well done there. Over here is the dragon player, three, six, nine offsuit dragons. They are ready to, no, no, no. They have, they need three, six, three, six crack. Here's our competitor for the six crack. So they needed to pair up the six crack. They could have called on the green or the red, which is what we were about to discard right here. Um, this player here, four, five, four, five, six, three, four, five, six consecutive run. They have all the fives. They might have been trying for the pair hand, four, five, four, five pair hand, but the fours went down. Okay, let's play again. Hopefully, we can play two more hands. I hope you're finding this helpful. Please let me know if this is has been helpful for you. If you have ideas for content please let me know send me an email here's my email michelle at marshlife.com it's in the video description also but if you have I, uh, any pain points please send them to me uh, and i'm going to gather pain points and be, hopefully use that as fodder to continue to develop ways to simplify decision making to take away those pain points and minimize overwhelm that's my goal so send me your pain points we have one multiple east that's kind of a toughie because we have no other wins we do have a dragon and a flower so with the East, we could maybe do something consecutive. We have some consecutive run in here. <laughs> really two, three, eight, nine, three, four, two, three. And we have tiles we can pass. So let's see what we can do with maybe East and West with a run. Or maybe wins. We'll see if they come around in the first Charleston. Okay, we have a multiple now. Our first multiple with a number tile. So we're going to target that. We'll let the seven go, two, three, the nine can go, and I think this dragon probably can go. We have two, three, four consecutive run as our predominant pattern. We do have a north and an east. We won't be able to use those number tiles, though, unless we play the concealed hand. We wouldn't need the east. Okay, now we have a three. We have some little odd potential building now, one, three, five. We have an eight and a nine. So that's that's a little risky. I think what I would do here, we have one, three, five, or two, three, four, five. I would focus there and let the east go. We have no west or south. So we could still maybe keep the north and the east if we get souths. We could maybe play the concealed hand. We just got a south, so we can keep that. Now we have to make a choice, though. We're, we're between hands. We're in between little odds, consecutive run, and wins and dragons. We have only two discards. I would not stop the Charleston here. Some people might stop the Charleston, but the thing is, is you're just delaying a decision that you're going to have to make in just a minute anyway. You might as well make the decision now. So we're going to pass the seven and the nine, and we'll let something go. We could do one, three, five, one, three, three, five, no gaps. 
So probably what I would do is let the four dot go at this point. We could still play maybe little odds is probably what I'm thinking. Here's a three bam. Now we'll keep that. I would let the wins go at this point and focus on little odds most likely. If, in that case, we could keep the odds in general. Pass a two. Let's say an east. Oh, we let an east go. Let's pass a north. And then we need to let something go. Let's let the seven bam go. If we get sixes, we can maybe switch to three, six, nine. Oh, good. Thank you, Karen. Okay, we've got three, six, nine now developing. We got the east back. I, I would not pass two wins. I would focus on th probably, let's see, three, five. We actually have a hand in here with no gaps, one, three, five. So I would let three, six, nine go. The three, six, nine, I suppose we could have done three, six, nine mixed suits, but we would need four flowers. We did pick up a five crack and a red dragon. So I think that was a good choice. We have no one crack and we're going to have to make a choice here. We have to, they only want two, so that's fine. We'll keep the three bam and let the north and the nine go. That east is floating around somewhere. Yeah, nine a dragon. Okay, so guess what? Okay, we're going to let the winds go first, especially the east, because somebody kept it. Okay, we have a hand in here with no gaps. And we have th uh, three discards. Hmm. So that was a great uh, Charleston. I wouldn't say we're a front runner. Six I'd say angry. we're a contender for this one, because our hand is pretty weak. But nine we could angry. maybe play... The fifth hand down on the left, one, three dots, green dragon, Kong, three, five, and bams. South wind. We have three discards and options. We could play one, West three, wind. five, dragon, th uh, fourth hand down, but we have a gap, no one. So I would focus on the fifth hand down. North wind. If we get a four crack, we could switch to consecutive run. We can also maybe characters. play the second hand down, Pung Pung or Pung Kong Pung Kong, and I wouldn't commit there yet. If another three crack goes down, we could maybe call Eight it and characters. commit to that second hand down because we have no gaps there. So we have two no gap hands: the second hand down and the fifth North hand down hand. on the left. Little odds is where we ended up. Nine dots. We have a pair we don't need with the 8 BAM. Somebody wanted that 9 BAM. You know Four what? Characters. I just noticed we have like number potential in here with dragons. We have all the threes. Nine dots. Let's watch the threes. Two bamboo. This was a like number day. It's kind of weird. It worked out Seven that way. Dots. Nine bamboos. Mm, the two bam is already out. Two bam. Uh-oh. Four bamboos. We have a quit. This is where I would change my thinking and consider defense. But we're in the we're in the begin game. They threw away a seven dot. That means they have seven bams. Four bamboos. So seven bams are going to be extremely risky. Nine dots. 
two dots. We're going to keep an eye on seven BAMs. If we draw a seven BAM, I would totally switch my hand. For example, hmm. we could switch to five, six, seven, eight. Because <laughs> I am not throwing Nine, a seven BAM five. if we get it. Oh, we got a joker. Okay, let's throw the six. six okay, five. now here I would think about that one, three, three, five hand with dragons. Hmm. Six dot Pung Kong, Pung Kong. Flower. Third hand down in one suit. We're going to pass. We just got a flower now. Okay, so flowers. We could play oh, a pair of flowers, like numbers with threes. Let's let the eight go. Eight bamboo. We can get a little bit of time here. Okay, now we do, let's see, we have one, three, five dragon here. There are no gap. Four well, we do have a gap, but we have a joker we could maybe use six dot. for a one crack. Maybe keep the threes two dot. for like number potential as a switch. And that gives us two discards to give us a little six time. Dot. I would not define this, though, because if a five crack goes wow. down, we're going to need to calm. That's a pair for us if we play that fourth hand down. Yep, that's fine, Karen. And you can rewind, rewind and that watch is. it again, or just pause it and take a breath and then rewind and watch more. So I, I know, well, we're, we're playing against people. Maybe, um, character. let's see here, maybe next week. Today we played with people. So maybe One next bamboo. week we can play with bots and that way we can go Eight much bamboo. slower. So we'll we'll play with robots next time, Karen. I'm sorry if this has been a bit overwhelming. Three dots. So ne oh, that would be a potential tile for us, but we're not ready for it. We would need to calm if we play one, three, three, five. So next, uh, I'll try to remember to play with robots next time. Three I'm characters. a creature of habit. <laughs> That's a pair for us if we're playing the fourth hand down. So next week we'll play with robots and, and we'll Flower. go much slower. So I apologize for that oversight. There's a dragon. Okay, let's let this five bam go. So oh, this is where we are thinking about playing uh, one, six bamboo, one, three dot, three crack, five crack, one, three, six bamboo. No one dots are out yet. I Sound think the three good. bam can go. So now we have each of the dragons and no gaps though. I think I let the one go. One dot. The reason I would let that one dot go is because that is a weakness. We have now all the dragons, Red one of each dragon. of the dragons. We could play like numbers with threes and use any number of jokers. We could also play one, three, five if we get a one crack, but there's a one crack out. So therefore, I would play like numbers and just let those go. Plus the red dragons are going down for that fourth hand down One and we need dragon. a pair there. So I would play like numbers with threes again and let these go. Two dots. All we need to do is build. We just need to build our threes. We've got Fifth our pair and we've got our singles. Five dots. Maybe the last game we could play with robots. Three dots. I just kind of forgot about that. Okay, so we're going to pass. Two bamboo. We have a pair of five cracks that we do not need. We probably One should let dragon. these go pretty soon. <clears throat> Six characters. Five dots. We got the one crack. It's too late though. It's well, let's let the green dragon go. 
green dragon. We got the one cracked, but there's one out and there are two red dragons out. Three bamboo. It would be pretty risky. Oh, and the threes are kind of going down. Three dots. No regrets. No regrets. Let's see if we can get a three, a, a red dragon. Six characters. Up. Oh, nope. Seven dot. They discarded that. We're gonna discard it. Seven dot. Uh oh. Oh man, that was scary. That was really scary. Okay. One dot. So let's see if we can maybe switch to. We're kind Bam of bamboo. We're kind of in between little odds with dragons. One fourth bamboo. hand down. We just got a five crack. Okay, so I think what I would do here is. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's let the three dot go. Three dot. Yeah, we'll play robots in the last game. We may be red switching dragon. to defense. There goes the red dragon. We'll pass. Okay, so red dragon just went down. So we won't be able to get a pair. North wind. Okay, now that means that we need to now four characters switch back two threes four bamboos we have these five cracks we don't need we're probably going to be playing Green defense dragon. at this point because we let a three dot go we were hoping for that red dragon let's define this as a three dot six characters so we can't play that little odd hand with dragons fourth hand down this one crack Five should be safe. Characters. Five crack just went down. Nobody wanted it. Oh my gosh. And then we get the one. Darn it. Poo. Too late. Five Too late. Characters. At least we have good discards anyway. Five dots. We have four good discards. Two characters. We have six picks, so if we get jokers, we can make it work, but it's probably not likely. Four characters. And if we draw a seven bam, you bet we're going to keep it. Eight bamboo. Because this, this player to our right, they're playing seven bams. Two bamboos. Two characters. Seven dot. That's kind of scary. Did they draw jokers? Oh, we got a three bam. Five characters. I don't think anyone wants the one cracks. Let's do those next. Nine I, I see one one crack. We don't know what the player across from us is doing. Eight bamboos. They have a lot of evens in Nine front of them. Characters. Oh, white dragon. We don't want to hold on to that. White dragon. Green dragon. Two characters. One bamboo. Oh, flower. That's going to be risky. One character. That is a risky tile right there. Nine. So characters. we have three picks and one disc, two discards. Three picks, two discards, including a risky tile, the, the flower. I'm kind of wondering if the player across from us switched to defense. I bet they have seven bams. That's my guess. Seven characters. Oh, they took a joker. That means they are playing to win. One dot. Maybe they are playing to win because they didn't throw the joker. One bamboo. A five dot was thrown. This one crack, though, we're going to let that go instead. One character. This five dot was just thrown. The five cracks nobody wants. Seven dots. Oh, my goodness. So they're trying to gather. Flower. Oh, man, that's painful. Oh, flower. Nobody wanted it, so we're going to throw that next. 
three bamboos were concealed. Flower. Four dot is a risky tile. West wind. They're playing two, four, six, eight on the left. So we're defense. Kong. We are not going to be playing to win. Five bamboos. We are going to play to get to a wall game, hopefully. We have two picks. The five crack can go and West then the joker. Wind. Oh, they got a joker. Two characters. Seven bam. Characters. Four bam. Four dot for the player on our left. Seven bam for the North player on wind. our right. We have a joker for our last discard. One dot. Joker. Yep. Joker. Okay. They weren't ready. Interesting. The player across from us was trying for a quint also. Okay. So, yeah, they needed another joker in there. They had the seven bams, but they needed a joker. Here, they were trying for a quint also. But I think the eights were already out. And over here, they're playing two, four, six, eight. So they were battling for the eight dot there. And then, of course, here we have the four dot and the seven bam. Okay, let's go to, we'll play the last game. Last game in Mahjong School, which is where I should have been playing the whole time. And I forgot. So I apologize to the beginners. Please forgive me for uh, that oversight. I apologize. I'm supposed to be playing in Mahjong School. This is where you play against robots and you get an hour to play a game. We're not going to need all that time, but at least we can slow down and answer questions that come up in chat. So I apologize. And thank you for the kudos, uh, Diane. I appreciate it. Okay, so this will be interesting. We have a joker, a flower, one nine in bams, five eight in cracks with a pair of eights, two, three, five, six, seven in dots, and a pair of white dragons. Incidentally, when I do, anytime I do the Let's Play live streams, and also when I do the hands-on exercises, I go through this, here's what we got. We have, let's see what we can do with these tiles. And I start left to right once they're organized. And then I, in my head, when I'm playing, I do it very quickly, but I look at every tile in order. So like, don't put your eights together. Don't put your evens together. Don't put your three, six, nine together. Put them in or in suit in numerical order. And then your winds and dragons together, because that's going to give you the lay of the land. Then look left to right. And in your head, say we have, or I have, Joker, flower, one, nine singles, five crack single, eight crack multiple. That's a multiple. That is where you start the decision making. Target the multiple. Then we have two, three, five, six, seven singles, pair eight or pair white dragon. So whatever we play, we're going to try to use the eight crack and the white dragon. We don't know yet what we're going to, how we're going to use it. But we can try to, to build around that. Let the multiples drive your decisions. We could maybe play two, four, six, eight, but we have no four, so that would be a gap. I would still keep the two, six. There is some consecutive with seven, eight, nine. So I would probably keep seven, eight, nine, maybe even the five dot, five, six, seven, eight. We have three tiles to pass. And you might think, well, why not keep the five crack? It's isolated. There's nothing to go from the five to the eight or even the five dot from using a different suit. Really, this five dot is isolated. It's not going to be helpful. So I would say we're in between five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine, or eight, or um evens with or without the joke the dragon and incidentally 
The dragon hands in consecutive run this year correspond. So if we play consecutive run, we won't be able to use the white dragon with that eight crack pair. So that's why I would probably think about trying for the even dragon hand. If we can get a two crack, I would focus on that hand. So let's see what we get. Okay, so we've got consecutive tiles in. So we have a lot of, our predominant pattern is five, six, seven, eight. So I would let the two go. And then I would look at the isolated tiles. The nine bam is isolated. We have five, six, seven, eight, all linked, but this nine bam is isolated. So I would probably let that go. And I typically don't pass white dragons. Who's patty cake? Jingles. Okay, we, we got in two, four, six, eight now. Okay, so let's reassess. We have two, four, six, eight potential in here now. So, but we still have a very strong representation of five, six, seven, eight. To, to use the multiples, we would need to play two, eight in BAMs and break up the eight crack. This six BAM is isolated. I would, I would throw that. We could maybe do six, seven, eight in one suit and let the dragons go. So probably what I would do here is pass five, seven, six, five, seven dot and six. Although let's see, let's see here. We could do five, six, cause there is a mix suit Kong hand here too. Six, seven, eight mix suit Kongs. The thing is I would not pass a white dragon with five and six. Because of that, you know what I would probably do here is let the six bam go. Oh my gosh, look at this though. Two bam, eight, I would not pass that. That would be a terrible pass. But what I would consider doing is keep the two and pass the white. Because we have six, seven, eight, one suit Kong. Or we have, let's see, six bam seven dot eight crack. Maybe let this five go. And that would be building around the eight crack. I think this is what I would do. I don't think I would pass two eight because of that dragon hand. We have no red dragon. That's a gap, a Kong gap. So that's why I would not play that hand. And if we play two eight in cracks, we have no two and we have no green dragon. That's two gaps. So this is what I would do here. We got a keeper, the six bam. We do have two, four, six, eight again, two, four, six, eight, Two, four, six, six, eight, three. We could do six, seven, eight mixed suit Kongs. We could do, let's see, the two, four, six, eight is not really strong. So I would focus on consecutive run, probably six, seven, eight mixed suit Kongs. So we do have all the like numbers, like numbers with sixes. I probably let that two, uh, four bam go, or maybe even this is going to, oh, I don't want to pass the white dragon. We just gave that to the second left. We don't want to pass them a pair. <laughs> okay, so probably six, seven, eight mixed suit Kongs. Now we have a seven crack, another multiple. We have six, seven, eight one suit Kongs in there now. I would pass this white dragon at this point because we're in between six, seven. You know what we could do is maybe play six, uh, seven, eight. Okay, now there's an eight bam. That's not really helpful though. There's a, that's isolated. 
the six bam up to the eight bam with a seven eight like that that's not going to be helpful so we're going to let it go anytime you have an isolated tile you see we don't have a seven bam there consider that as a discard depending because you could still maybe do like numbers or evens for example but we've got options here already and we just have a new multiple there with our eight and a five now we have five six seven eight one suit pung kong pung kong or we could do six seven eight mixed suit kongs right here so we have options six seven eight mixed suit kong or five six seven eight one suit pung kong pung kong they want three we have two i would keep these tiles and see what comes in i think asking for two is reasonable we're in between hands, but it's an optional cross. So I probably would keep these as to see what develops because that seven crack pair could go. So we have discards, two discards. I would say we're a contender for this game. We're going to discard that. Two and now we just need to watch discards. We could con the eight crack two regardless because we need a Kong if we play the second hand down or if we play the fifth hand down on the right. One bamboo. We could also play the one suit Eight bamboo. hand on that fifth line. We just got a joker. Four so bamboo. now we have no discards. This is when we're gonna have to start thinking about picking a Two hand. Bamboos. With the option with the, the fifth hand down, the Three one suit bamboos. or mixed suit, we need a pair of flowers. That's a weakness. If we don't draw a flower, Four I would probably bamboo. focus on Pung Kong in one suit. Oh, but we just got a seven dot. That's another multiple. So what I would do is I would build around the most of my multiples, which means six, seven, eight mixed suit Kongs. That would use three multiples, including the Pung. We have a weakness though, the flower, but there are eight. So I think it's worth, it's worth the risk. So I would play six, seven, eight mixed suit, fifth hand down, on the right five and that would be leveraging three multiples including the con. three bamboos nine bamboos we're even set we could kong the six kong, kong the seven bamboo. and the eight we just need a flower that's all we need we just got a joker so now this six pair bamboos. we don't need can go away nine bamboos we're ready to kong six seven eight mixed suit kongs six characters we need a six bam nine bamboos joker wow oh my seven goodness characters. you know what i would be tempted to play a quint at this Five point dots. we could maybe switch to the third quint at Eight at bamboos. this point if we get a flower, I would I would seriously consider playing this quint. West wind. Look at all these jokers. Now you're not going to get all these Six jokers dots. in typically in a regular game. We're in mahjong school, Four so bamboo. they're trying to help build confidence here. And typically, you're going to get lots of jokers Green in ragged. mahjong school, which I wish they would not do. I wish they would let it truly Two be bamboos. random, but I could be wrong. Four dots. I have made a request to the development team at Mahjong Time to give us the One option bamboo. of playing with a truly random wall Seven that characters. doesn't feed us jokers and smarter robots. So they are considering that. Five characters. So we'll see. I hope that they allow that. Eight bamboos. We still don't have to pick a hand yet, but Five bamboos. we we have a, a good strong potential for oh. that quint. Green dragon. One bamboo. We're one away from ready on that fifth hand down on the right, though. Three characters. We're gonna have to make a choice pretty soon. nine bamboos red dragon pung oh joy. white dragon 
There's an exchange for a joker over there. Six dots. Eight dots. We still haven't had to make a choice yet. We have one discard. Three characters. You really don't have to pick a hand until you run out of discards so or when a tile goes down that you could take. That would be a decision Please maker win. also. But while you're Nine gathering, characters. we're still kind of in gather mode at the moment. Kong. West Wind. Okay, Kong with a Pung of Dragons. Eight bamboos. They're playing three, six, nine knitted. Okay, let's let this seven crack go. All right, here seven we characters. are set for the quint. Four dots. We can quint the seven dot, quint the eight crack, and con the flowers. Five characters. We're also ready to win on a flower if we Four use this bamboos. for the sixes. But wouldn't you rather go for a bigger hand if you can? Especially Five with all dots. these jokers. Why not? Four dots. Let's just see what happens. West wind. Ready to win on a flower, or Seven we can go bamboos. for this quint. You think we should go for the quint, or One should we go character. for a win? Well, either way, we're probably going to win. My get, I'm thinking we're we're a front runner. Nine dots. Green dragon. Oh, oh my gosh! Look, we've got. All right, let's just let let the quint idea go. Joker. Okay. We're ready to win on a flower. One character. We don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth, do we? Wind. Okay, so here's our Green flower. Dragon. We're ready on a flower. I love Two Quince dogs. too. Six, seven, eight, mix two Kongs, fifth hand down on the right. Hopefully, we'll see a flower. We have, uh, let's Kong. You know why? Pong. Maybe we can make this a pure hand. Joker. One bamboo. Let's see. Six bam. I don't see a six bam out there, and I don't see a seven North dot out wind. there either. So we do have potential for a pure hand, which will double the value of the hand. Red dragon. Flower. There it is. Mahjong. Mahjong. All right, we ditched the quint and went for Mahjong. Any win is a good win. I think that would look good on a t-shirt, actually. What do you think? Would that be a good t-shirt? Any win is a good win. Hashtag Maj Life. All right, now the robots here are not smart, so don't even think of looking at their hands. It, they're a hot mess but we still can practice decision making in mahjong school until they get smart bots so try not to analyze what they're doing because typically they have garbage okay that's going to do it for this live stream thank you so much for digging into the nitty-gritty basics with me today we'll be back again next monday and we'll do another episode let me look and see what our topic is I have a recurring list of topics and hopefully that list will grow. Otherwise, we're just going to keep repeating. So if you have pain points, send me an email with your pain points so that we can have more varied content. But right now, the current content that recurs covers a lot of bases. So the next topic is testing your instincts. We're going to do what I call Charleston chain reaction. We're going to practice identifying the strength of the hand. We're going to identify plan A and plan B and compare results. That's next week. Uh, fifth hand down on the right. Huh? Let's see what uh, under consecutive run one, two, three, four, fifth hand down on the right. 
Mixu Kongs, six, seven, eight, Mixu Kongs. Consecutive run, the category is where we were there. Thank you moderators for being here and thank you again for coming to this nitty gritty basics. Let's play live stream. If you're free tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to do nitty gritty prime time. And the topic tonight, did I already share that? I forgot already. The topic tonight is competitive play. It might be a little much. We're going to talk about competitive play tonight. Okay, excellent. Have a great day and a great week. Oh, uh, Friday night, we're going to be doing Simply Social Let's Play live stream where we just hang out and socialize and still do gameplay with commentary. So if you're free, join us at 5 p.m. Eastern time.